Today's video is sponsored by Corsair and the new Hydro X series. If you're keen to get into custom liquid cooling but you don't know where to start, check out their custom cooling configurator. And this is a useful tool for even experienced builders. The interactive and intuitive configurator allows you to visualize how the end product will look, and most important of all, allow you to quickly and easily work out all the cooling bits you'll need to make your ultimate gaming PC. For more information, please check the link in the video description. Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today's video is going to be very interesting if you're a competitive gamer or at all interested in optimizing your setup for input latency. We've already covered this sort of topic before when both AMD and Nvidia introduced their Radeon Anti-Lag and Ultra Low Latency modes respectively to see how much of a benefit they bring, but today we're looking at something a little different. Just over a week ago, a number of our Patreon members brought to my attention in our Discord chat a video from Battle Nonsense titled 40% less input lag without AMD anti-lag or NVIDIA ultra low latency. I'll chuck a link in the description if you want to go watch it, but it is a very interesting video. And one of the key findings that Chris made while testing a small collection of games was that using a frame rate cap was actually a much better way of reducing input latency than using any low latency modes from AMD or NVIDIA. For example, when testing Overwatch, he found that the game had about 62 milliseconds of input latency with ultra low latency modes and enabled while running at around 81 FPS and 99% GPU load. But when the game is capped to 60 FPS and the GPU load drops to around 76%, input latency was as low as 41 milliseconds. So a pretty significant reduction from what appears to be stopping the GPU from being choked up with 99% utilization. Chris also found similar gains in PUBG and Battlefield 5 when using their in-game frame rate caps. So as long as the GPU is running at less than about 95% utilization in these games, latency is reduced compared to going all out with an uncapped frame rate. The reason I was so interested in this is that on face value, it seems counterintuitive. When you increase your frame rate, your input latency should decrease as the game will be able to display the results of your input much sooner with a higher refresh rate. As an example, in a typical scenario without low latency modes, You'll have two frames of input latency. One frame is for the CPU to do its work and the other for the GPU. At 60 FPS, that could be 33.3 milliseconds of latency, two frames at 16.7 milliseconds each. But game at say 200 FPS, and that latency should reduce to five milliseconds per frame for 10 milliseconds total. So a pretty massive difference between a low and high frame rate there. But what Battle Nonsense's video was showing is that something is occurring when your frame rate is uncapped that is hurting input latency, whether that's in the way the GPU buffers or processes frames, or how the game engine operates, or something driver side. And when you implement that crucial frame rate cap and have your GPU running below 99% utilization, the issue is alleviated. Buffers go back to their optimal low latency configurations or something like that. So naturally, pretty interesting findings. And this is something that I wanted to test. I wanted to firstly confirm that frame rate caps reduce input latency and then secondly to explain why this happens is this the way the gpu buffers frames is it a game engine thing is it a driver penalty i reached out to nvidia and amd to get some explanations and we'll talk about that a bit later firstly let's do some testing i tested seven games for this video all on my core i9 9900k test rig with the primary gpu being an nvidia geforce rtx 2080 super although i did some amd testing as well just to confirm things for latency testing same setup as before i placed a photo detector on the display and hooked that up to an oscilloscope along with a mouse from there, I can plot the exact times at which I initiate an input and get the results on screen. We then average 20 runs per data point because this sort of thing can have a lot of variance between each run. The display we're using is also the ultra fast Pixio PX5 Hayabusa, a 240Hz 1080p TN monitor with low processing lag. Generally, we are either running with adaptive sync enabled or above the refresh range with vSync off. Let's start with the Gears 5 results. This is a DirectX 12 game, so while I did test NVIDIA's ultra low latency mode, it made no difference because DX12 games are incompatible with low latency modes. You can see margin of error stuff here, but crucially, what you can see is a latency improvement when we move from an uncapped game to a capped game. Uncapped, the game runs at 99% GPU utilization at 184 FPS in our test area with ultra settings. We saw input latency around 27 milliseconds. When we cap the frame rate, to 144 FPS using the in-game option, GPU utilization dropped to 76% and our input lag also dropped down to around 20 milliseconds. So a seven milliseconds reduction or a 26% decrease. Now this is similar to what Battle Nonsense found. 
However, I also decided to cap the game's frame rate to the same 144 FPS using Revertuner Statistics Server or RTSS, which is a popular tool that people use to cap frame rates. When the game is capped using RTSS, there is no latency advantage. In fact, input latency remained around the same mark as when the game is uncapped, despite the GPU running at 75% utilization. This immediately suggests to me that it's not the act of capping the frame rate itself or the GPU running at below 100% utilization that causes this improvement to input latency. It's something to do with the game's in-game frame rate cap, but let's push on and see what we find in other titles. In Battlefield 5, I found similar results to Battle Nonsense. Uncapped, the game was running at 128 FPS in my configuration, with 97% GPU utilization, producing about 52 milliseconds of input lag, with both NVIDIA's ultra low latency mode enabled and future frame rendering disabled. When I set the game's frame rate cap to just 120 FPS, immediately input lag dropped to 33 milliseconds, a 37% decrease, with the GPU humming at 90% utilization. However, as with Gears 5, using RTSS to cap the frame rate made no improvement to input lag and in fact increased latency to 56 milliseconds. Here's where things start to get really interesting. Far Cry 5 is another game that has a frame rate cap built in. At 1080p with a 2080 Super, I wasn't really GPU limited in any scenario here, running at a little over 200 FPS at 92% GPU utilization when the frame rate is uncapped with about 62 milliseconds of input latency. However, capping the frame rate to 144 FPS with either the in-game option or RTSS increased latency to around 65 to 67 milliseconds with GPU utilization around 66%. So unlike both Gears 5 and Battlefield 5, using the in-game frame rate cap doesn't improve input latency in this game. In fact, it makes it worse. This is the behavior I'd expect to see from most games. As the frame rate decreases, input lag increases. Obviously, this isn't the case with all games as we've seen, but certainly it is for some. Another game that acts like Far Cry 5 is The Division 2. This is a very well optimized game. I achieved around 24 milliseconds of input lag running uncapped at 151 FPS with about 97% GPU utilization. I used a variety of in-game frame rate caps and found that they either did nothing to improve input lag in the case of the 140 and 120 FPS caps or increased input lag in the case of the 80 FPS cap. With GPU utilization down as low as 46% with an 80 FPS cap, input lag increased to 30 milliseconds. That's a 6 millisecond difference, which matches the 6 millisecond increase in frame time, going from 151 FPS at 6.62 milliseconds per frame to 80 FPS at 12.5 milliseconds per frame. Metro Exodus doesn't have an in-game frame rate cap, but it did see decent gains from NVIDIA's ultra low latency mode in my testing, improving input lag by about half a frame, which matches my initial Radeon anti-lag testing. However, like with other titles, capping this game's frame rate using RTSS increased input lag in line with the frame rate decrease, similar to other results I saw. Of course, this testing wouldn't be complete without a few competitive shooters. In CSGO, very similar results to what we saw with Metro Exodus. With an in-game frame rate cap reducing the frame rate from 650 FPS to 120 FPS, I saw a massive 13 millisecond increase in input latency, which is around twice the frame time difference. Again, this makes sense. The game is fully CPU limited here, so we can't make use of any ultra low latency modes, even though they were enabled for this testing, which typically means input latency is at least two full frames worth. And yes, I did test with all the lower settings at 1080p. I'm not a competitive gamer myself, but it sounds like most people just leave everything on the minimum settings to crank up that frame rate for exactly this reason, reducing input latency. If capping the frame rate was beneficial, that might have sent shockwaves through the CSGO community, but nope, it's not worth doing. And finally, Fortnite. I'd ignore the raw values here given this isn't click to shoot time like the other games, but click to load the building tools, which was easier to test. That's for the people wondering why input latency is up near 80 milliseconds in this title, which is much higher than the other games. Input latency is lower for shooting, but that's more difficult to test consistently. Just testing the in-game frame rate cap, Fortnite runs similarly to Far Cry 5 in that introducing a frame rate cap only serves to increase latency, whether I was GPU or CPU limited. So probably don't go around capping your Fortnite frame rate in the hope of an input latency improvement. All right, pretty interesting results all up. The first thing we can put to bed is that no, capping your frame rate is not a simple fix for improving input latency. That's not to say a frame rate cap never improves input latency because it quite clearly does in some situations as we've seen from my testing and from Battle Nonsense's testing. It's just heavily dependent on the game and how you implement the cap. 
of the games I tested, I saw the in-game frame rate cap improving latency in Battlefield 5 and Gears 5. Battle Nonsense found similar in PUBG and Overwatch. However, I also discovered that games like Far Cry 5, Fortnite, and The Division 2 do not benefit from using the in-game frame rate cap, and in fact, if you do use this feature in those games, you'll end up doing the opposite and increasing latency. As for using a frame capping tool like RTSS or on the AMD side, Radeon Chill, in not one instance did using a frame cap other than the game's built-in option improve input latency. So if you're planning to just cap all your games using RTSS or Radeon Chill, you can almost always expect a latency increase even if the game benefits from using the in-game cap. These results make it very difficult to give a broad recommendation to just go ahead and either cap your frame rate or not cap it because it really depends on how each game handles inputs and frame caps. I think Battle Nonsense was just unlucky, or maybe lucky depending on how you look at it, with his testing. The three games he tested just happen to be three games that do see a benefit. That's just what happens sometimes, certainly I think his results are valid in the games he showed, it's just not a general representation of PC games as a whole. When I asked Nvidia and AMD, both independently responded with basically what I've just told you, so that's nice to know. AMD confirmed that in the case of Overwatch, for example, Radeon Chill doesn't provide the latency benefits of the in-game FPS cap and suspected that it's a game implementation thing that may only work in some titles. Nvidia said that an in-game frame rate cap can facilitate low latencies in certain cases because the GPU when underutilized is ready to process the next rendering command as soon as it is sent. But this latency benefit may not be present when the rendering load fluctuates or if the frame cap is too aggressive. Neither company said this was a broad solution for improving latency. Unfortunately, this whole thing means that improving input latency will continue to be a bit of an enigma. It could even take testing on a per game basis to determine whether frame caps, low latency modes, different settings combinations, and so on impact input lag and to what extent. So if input lag is crucial to you and the game you're playing, you'll probably need to either do individual game testing or hope someone in the community already has. Anyway, hope this video has been interesting, especially to our Discord members that asked me to look into this. Subscribe for more, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Consider grabbing a t-shirt from our merch store, store.hardwareunbox.com. I'll catch you in the next one.